If I get a such uh, this this particular picture, I would be so happy. I was born and brought up in a place called as Koparga, which is around 250 kilometers away from Mumbai. I was born in a typical middle class religious Maharashtrian family where we were given the essential samskaras right since the childhood. So I used to uh, perform uh, Aarti for uh, Lord Shiva, Lord Ganesha and Lord Krishna also sometimes. I was born in a well-to-do family. My father uh, was working as a chief accountant in a, in a regional cooperative bank and my mother was a homemaker. So because my father used to be traveling quite a lot, so there was very little supervision on me. And I was born after 15 years of my parents' marriage, so I was a very pampered kid. I used to get whenever, whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. So that made me a little bit wasted, spoiled type of uh, kid. Uh, I, I started indulging into all uh, wrong things like smoking and drinking, not out of as a habit, but more out of peer pressure because it you know sounded cool and if you didn't fit in you you were you were not cool enough but very soon i realized that uh, this is not this is not really good for me i used to always contemplate upon it but i really didn't have any trigger or any motive to uh, give away such bad habits well uh, i was into my first year engineering and at that time i uh, i was going steady with my uh, then girlfriend, uh, we were together for three years, but due to some some reasons, uh, we didn't get along and uh, we broke off. Till then, life had always been joyful and uh, free of any any such incidents. After that, what happened is it 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 also affected my studies. I used to be a bright student in my class, but after this incident, I somehow could not clear my first year engineering examination. You no, know, I I I was I was thinking what. What am I going to tell my parents? What am I going to tell my friends? You know, what what led me to this failure? So at this point of time, you know, I was a 20 year old, unmisguided youth, and I really didn't know, you know, what to do with the life that lies ahead of me. So at one point of time, not those so seriously, but at one point of time, I I contemplated that, you know, is there a meaning to life? Is there is there anything, you know, meaningful to life? And what to do with the life that we have got? When I suddenly remembered that uh, I have so much of spare time, so I would, why shouldn't I read something, uh, something that will boost my mood, um, you know, change my thoughts and make it more positive. So I, I remember that my uncle, maternal uncle, had this copy of Bhagavad Gita and I was always fascinated by the picture of uh, Lord Krishna and Arjuna on the battlefield of Kurukshetra and I was always fascinated to, to read about it. But because it was in Sanskrit language and I was not very familiar to it, I really didn't take up to it seriously. But then after these things happened in my life, uh, I remember that one of my friends in my engineering college also has a, has a copy of Bhagavad Gita as it is by Swami Prabhupada. So what I did is, I decided to use my spare time to read Bhagavad Gita. Well, in the college, uh, I used to be a sort of uh, bhai types, you know, like, you know, little bit of gundagardi here and there, you know. So when Ashish found out that I was in his room, he was he was he was surprised at what am i doing in his room so but then when i told him that i need a copy of bhagavad gita to read he was like you know you okay you can take it you just take it and leave so i started reading uh, page by page i completed the first uh, uh, of the first reading in around a week or so and then i suddenly realized that i'm i'm leading such a sinful life and I'm, I'm already i'm i've already wasted so many years of my life and i don't correct myself at this point of time it would be really disastrous for me in the future but then i had after reading bhagavad gita for the first time i had a lot of doubts in my mind and i somehow thought that if i could get these doubts clarified that would be really beneficial so what i did is when the second time i read Bhagavad Gita, I sat down with a piece of pen and paper and whatever doubts came to my mind, I started 
jotting it down so that i can you know uh, further use it for reference or ask it to somebody who can really help me out in this matter there was a section you know contact us section in the bhagavad gita this was uh, the email address i remember very clearly it was nayanaranjana. at the rate bbt.se so i forwarded uh, through email all my queries that i had on this particular address i, I had mentioned very clearly that i am an engineering undergraduate and i had you know facing such and such problems in life and i don't know what to do with my life and i had even contemplated of ending it at that point of time to be very honest so this email of mine was forwarded to uh, the head of uh, iskon youth forum at that time the head was his grace praneshwar prabhu so I, within a few days i got an email reply from praneshwar prabhu uh, answering all my queries and also encouraging me and uh, trying to boost my morale saying that you know you shouldn't do anything untoward towards your with your life so he also encouraged me to you know chant hare krishna that was the time when i first started chanting the hare krishna maha mantra there was a friend uh, who studied with me in college his name was abhijit prabhu and abhijit was the you know the intelligent type of student while i was you know like the naughty types in the class so abhijit prabhu is not really like me or spend much time with me so one day i come home late when my mother told me that abhijit had visited uh, twice or thrice during the day and i was shocked that he did actually visit me though it was quite late in the night i decided to pay a visit to abhijit at his house when abhijit opened the door and you know very surprisingly he said like uh, are you reading bhagavad gita and i said yes i i am reading bhagavad gita he said do you know praneshwar prabhu i said yes i do know praneshwar prabhu he said how can a person like you read bhagavad gita i was not surprised because that kind that was the kind of person i was nobody would really believe me at that point of time that i am actually reading bhagavad gita and uh, trying to you know change my life he showed me an email that he received from praneshwar prabhu and he praneshwar prabhu had mentioned to him about me and told him to meet me now what praneshwar prabhu didn't know that abhijit and me stay in the same colony we also know each other since childhood and we are act- actually friends so this was like you know sort of a uh you know funny coincidence that abhijit me and praneshwar prabhu uh, we got to meet each other so now uh, what happens is uh, i and abhijit now become very good friends and abhijit uh, when i went to abhijit prabhu's room and uh, that was the first time when abhijit prabhu showed me an actual lecture you know video lecture of prabhupad so that was the first time when i ever got to listen to the voice of prabhupad and then abhijit prabhu also showed me a lot of books and one of the books that he showed me was uh, the krishna book the famous krishna book where we have the stories of lord krishna and in the middle of this book you will see the various paintings you know painted by various artists what prabhupad refers to as spiritual windows and they were very beautiful painting and i was mesmerized and you know, i had never seen such beautiful paintings before in my life and one of this this particular painting was when you know krishna is sitting with his coward friends in the forest of vrindavan at the banks of yamuna all his friends are offering him something to eat in my mind i thought like only if i get a such uh, this this particular picture i would be so happy and maybe i will you know if i have this picture i will frame it in my room and i'll start worshiping krishna you know th- that was the first time when uh, the real attraction to krishna had sprouted in my in my heart and then uh, i i i asked my mother you know if she has a similar picture we searched uh, the entire house but we didn't find a similar picture then i went to the local stores and i asked illa like this do you have this particular picture of lord krishna and they had also not seen something like this before because this 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 kind of art was completely new to a rural place like kopargaon and then you know this feeling was there in my mind and i was little dejected and disappointed like somehow i will should i get this picture and i'll start worshiping krishna so this was it and uh, a few days passed and i really I uh, had forgotten about this picture and after a few days one of my friends uh, Ujwal I remember visited my house now Ujwal you know he he had this interest in arts and uh, paintings and you know 
literature sort of thing so when he came to my house i showed him this picture and i said wow this is such a beautiful picture and he immediately responded yes yes this is really nice this is really good stuff you know and he was also amazed to see the quality and the depth of the picture and the facial expressions of krishna and his friends and a few days later uh, uh, ujwal again came to my house and then we decided to go for a movie and we you know plan to go for a 9 o'clock show in the in the evening so we started around 8 8:15 to reach the theater to find that the tickets are sold out and we were, we were like surprised you know this is not even such a hit movie and you know how come the movies are sold out which well said that let's go to the bus depot the central bus depot let's have some pav bhaji and some snacks there and we'll have some ice cream and then we'll go home for the first time in my life i saw a iskon bus and i was like you know i was pleasantly surprised to see devotees in you know saffron dress and some in white dress and you know clean shaved with a tilak on their head so hesitantly i approached them and uh, and i met uh, his grace antakela prabhu and uh, his grace padmana prabhu who was leading the sankirtan party the bus was coming from jagannath puri Uh, I introduced myself as you know someone who is associated with Iskon and I even told him that I know Praneshwar Prabhu well and they were very happy to see me and Takela Prabhu immediately invited me inside the bus when for the first time I saw a bus you know a, a caravan type of bus where they have a makeshift kitchen in the cabin and they have a uh, seats are replaced by a bed like structure so that you know everybody can sit on it and there is a storage space below the bed and the rear side of the vehicle can be you know opened up into a makeshift store where they have you know various gift articles pens and diaries and posters to you know to be distributed to be sold that was the first time when i was seeing something like this i was very fascinated i was very happy they had uh, jagannath ji in the bus and and uh, i spent almost couple of hours with them you know i was very happy so antakela prabhu told me that they were traveling from jagannath puri and the previous night they were at nasik so this particular evening uh, they had reached shirdi and decided to halt at shirdi but somehow at the last moment he changed his mind and came to kopargaon and which is very unusual for him because he usually doesn't travel too late in the evening So this he had just reached minutes before i had reached the central bus depot and then i spent time with him i had prashad with the devotees you know samshas prashad and then we did a you know some in you know, a kirtan for some while and then it was quite late it was around 10 30 11 o'clock in the night then i decided that it's time for me to go home and uh, reluctantly i didn't want to leave the association of devotees so very reluctantly i I decided to go home and I I bid farewell to them and I started moving towards my bike when suddenly Antakela Prabhu said hey please come back I I I want to give you something and I was very happy I I came back and then he uh, Antakela Prabhu was talking to me and then he opened this uh, store where I saw there were quite a lot of things you know there were diaries there were there were Bhagavad Gita there were pen there were posters and he was not even looking and he was talking to me and he pulled out something for from from there and he said this is a gift for you from krishna and then then i opened it it was a poster and when i opened the poster it was the same poster where lord krishna is having lunch with his friends in in vrindavan the same poster that i so desperately wanted Uh, since so many days i was i was so shocked and surprised pleasantly shocked of course i was so surprised and tears started rolling into my eyes i i started crying and and antakela prabhu couldn't understand why what happened suddenly why he started crying so he let me cry for some time and then when i calmed down he asked me what happened and then i narrated the whole story to antakela prabhu i was like you know so ecstatic and that was the point when i decided like you know this is it you know this is the moment of truth in my life this is the point where i don't need any other proof of lord krishna's existence i asked lord krishna for something and see the 
beautiful way he he arranged everything to be delivered to me it was like you know uh, you know personal delivery through his devotees i i what i did is the next day i framed that beautiful picture and it is decorating my wall and now that picture is everything for me and that is how my bond with krishna started or my relationship with the serious relationship with krishna actually started what happened after that is uh, unfortunately my father met an accident he was uh, bedridden for two and a half years i had just given up everything all the bad habits and had started chanting hare krishna and then i asked krishna like why why me and why all this now when i had given up everything why are you doing this to me that was a time when praneshwar prabhu told me that you know surrendering unto krishna is very important in life and sometimes some things happen to us Uh, so that you know we really or truly surrender unto krishna maybe uh, krishna is trying to make you stronger in krishna consciousness so he advised me to increase my uh, you know concentration while chanting hare krishna so i started chanting hare krishna more intently my 16 rounds became more and more intense because there was this fear of losing my father that that really helped me mature in my Uh, in my spiritual life in my material life also had i not been chanting i would have definitely faced a nervous breakdown or something like that but uh, chanting hare krishna and intently chanting hare krishna really helped me to cope with cope up with the situation unfortunately after two and a half years i lost my father but till then uh, i had become so strong that i could face this adversity with lot of strength and courage and with lot of maturity so i you know i realized that you know we are not really the bodies but we are the soul and uh, you know body changes so soul changes from one body to the other and as soon as one one's body becomes useless or you know we you know he has then to migrate or transmigrate to to another body so this this philosophy really helped me to cope up with this situation it was july 2006 it is how mukund madhav prabhu brought me to Uh, Jew for the first time in 2006, and then uh, he showed me all around the temple. And Pranishwar Prabhu also took me around. That was the first time when I actually got to take darshan of uh, their lordships, Sri Sri Radha Raj Bihari, and I was so happy because till then I only had a photograph gifted to me by Pranishwar Prabhu in my house, and I used to worship those. Uh, photographs and i used to always pray to krishna that i want to come and have your darshan i want to come and stay with you i want to be with you this this i used to always pray to him that you know please 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 uh, invite me or please bring me to you and this is how krishna brought me to mumbai for the first time and uh, when i came to mumbai that was also the first time when i got to interact uh, with his holiness gopal krishna maharaj uh, the first time i met gopal krishna maharaj it was like you know something special you know the very first interaction with him i thought that you know you know something there's something special about guru maharaj then i got to know some more things about gopal krishna maharaj that how he has been uh, serving uh, his divine grace swami prabhupad how he has been so instrumental in uh, you know distributing books which was very dear to uh, shri la prabhupad and how maharaj has been a, a special servant to shri la prabhupad my conviction become stronger that if at all i have to accept a spiritual master it should be his holiness gopal krishna maharaj i because i i was uh, i was there around the in in and around the temple so i used to get quite a lot of personal service uh, after i got initiated uh, i got the name uh, vasudev chitta das you know which uh, means like you know whose whose chitta is always to be is is to be submerged in vasudev which is not the case yet but i'm still trying to be uh, what uh, my guru maharaj intends me to be how i would describe guru maharaj in five words is uh, he is very humble he is uh, very sincere he is very dedicated he is very disciplined and he is very merciful so before coming to krishna consciousness my life was uh, pretty much undisciplined i didn't have any time table as such in life now what has happened after coming to krishna consciousness in spite of having a a, a professional life 
I still maintain my spiritual life as well as as well as my professional life uh, both in in sync. Like it is not that because I have become a I have become a devotee, so my professional life has been affected, or because of my professional life, my spiritual life has been affected. I am currently working with Reliance Infrastructure as a senior manager. Now currently uh, I am uh, working in the central engineering services, and my job is to. Uh, help with the network planning the electricity distribution uh, uh, business of reliance energy and the network planning my message uh, to devotees and people in general would be that krishna consciousness is an authentic and a very beautiful way of life chanting especially chanting of hare krishna maha mantra has helped me a lot especially to concentrate that has helped me to achieve a lot of things in life that has helped me to become a good citizen a good employee a good husband a good son a good brother it has helped me immensely <clears throat> to be a good human being overall please take up to this life of krishna consciousness please chant start chanting hare krishna maha mantra it has helped a, a sinner like me and it has really helped me to achieve all the success that i have in my life i owe all my success to the krishna consciousness way of life i had Uh, and i would sincerely request all of you to to take up to this way of life at least give it a try give it a chance so that you can make your lives sublime and beautiful hari krishna